And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going back to Philadelphia, 1776. We're going directly to the Assembly Hall to try to put together some deals uh, and try to put together some articles of the Constitution. We're looking at Founding Fathers uh, from um, Jolly Roger Games. Uh, it's from three to five players, one to two hours. Christian Leonard, Jason Matthews, the designers, same guys that brought us 1960, The Making of a President, and one of those worked on Twilight Struggle as well. Uh, let's check out this historical uh, gem here and see how it's played, and I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of Founding Fathers, you get to be one of the major delegates that had to do with the Constitution. Now, uh, you get the uh, player aid and three of the pieces to start with for that uh, for that delegate. And you, know, you could be James Mad Madison or Roger Sherman, William Patterson, Charles Pinckney, Alexander Hamilton. Now, you can only be certain ones of these, depending on how many players there are. It has a lot of historical text about what this person did. It also shows you how many, uh, from the states that have delegates, how many delegates they have, and from what sort of political party or faction they are. And the player aid also gives you some rules and, and things on the back there. And that's pretty much before you get started. You're also given the actual card of the person that you are. So this is uh, James Madison. And through a drafting process, you'll end up with two more cards from different states and factions, depending on how you draft. One thing I wanted to point out is that more than half of the rule book actually is historical content to what happened, you know, with what this game is all about, which is really cool. You can learn a lot about the history. You can learn a lot about the states and the delegates. And it's really a cool thing uh, to be able to dive in deep into the theme and into the historical contents of this. Uh, even cooler uh, is in the rule book, it actually shows you the the diagram of the, the, the hall that they laid out in and that they did all this uh, negotiating in. Actually has a picture photo of the assembly room with the green tables here. Um, and it shows you what it originally was like. And when you use, look at that and you zoom back out, they really did a good job of trying to make the board portray as much as they possibly could, act exactly how it was back then with the green tables in the assembly room and the committee room. And this is going up to the, to the cracked bell, which at the time wasn't yet called uh, the Liberty Bell, but this is where it was. And just did a really good job of thematically making the board be like history. There's four different things you can do on your turn. Uh, and the first thing that you can do on your turn is vote. So let's talk about the assembly room and voting on an article. Another cool thing is if you look at the articles and you read them really closely, the House of Representatives shall be composed of members every second year by the people of several states. And this is uh, sort of the article uh, section 2 clause 4 and on the opposite side is a is a against article It pretty much says something against what this article is for so like, these articles come out I should show you that there's essentially four different types of political parties or uh, Factions if you want to call them the easiest way to show you these tokens over here the big star just think Texas big states big star big Texas uh, so this is big states. The small stars are small states. These two are always opposed of each other. The two white tokens, big and small states, always opposed of each other. Here with the eagle, we have federalists, and the snake is anti-federalists. These two black uh, tokens are always ab opposing of each other. These from black and white, they don't care either way, but these are opposed and those are opposed, and those are the four different factions in the game. So the article that's up for vote now is something that's supplied by the big states. So how can we vote for this? Well, I've got three cards to start with, and uh, my three cards, I have uh, obviously a feather, which is a wild, because this is me, James Madison, but I have two, uh, you know, Federalist um, tokens here, and they are from different states. This guy is from Virginia, and uh, this one's from Maryland, of course. There's good flavor text of history of all this stuff. So if I wanted to, I could use one of these cards to vote. Now I can either vote with one of these cards of Maryland, and what I would do is put it face down on the side that I wanted to vote. The green table is yay, the red table is nay. And if I wanted to vote for this, I would throw down Maryland and I would put one of my three influence markers there and say, boom, that's me. But in this case, I actually have two cards, two of my cards here, the backside show me that they're from Virginia. So actually what I could do, is I could vote in this case with both delegates from Virginia and I still get to put one on there. 
Why is that important? Well, if someone else from Virginia wanted to vote on this, they would have to outdo this. Meaning, if someone wanted to vote nay and they were from Virginia, you would need not two, but you would need three cards to outdo this. And if that happened, then these would get removed. So putting two down, A, makes it harder to be overthrown, and two, uh, you actually get points towards the end for every delegate that you've got down there. So that would be a vote. And then I would redraw uh, the two cards that I put down. And when you're drawing cards, you can see states and factions on each one. So you know which ones are gonna be interesting to you. And maybe I grab the two small state ones, and then these would sort of fill back in after I do that. And now I have my new hand. One more important thing about the voting is we saw this as a big state and let's say now I have a couple of states that have the small state faction on them. A small state uh, person could never vote for a large state. They would have to vote against. And, and so, you know, those oppositions you have to you have to pay attention to during the game to make sure you're not, uh, you know, going against something that you can't go against. And, and, you know, so small states would never vote for a large state and vice versa. And the same things with the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. This person, if they voted, would have to vote nay. And that's so, so one of the things you could do is vote. The second thing you could do is play events. So if I want to play this in an event, uh, if the Maryland delegation has already declared its vote, replace the controlling player's influence marker with one of your own. So if Maryland's already out there, I could swap one of my influence markers with theirs. Essentially, I'd be kind of stealing their points at the end, and you could play this as an event. Look at this event. Move up two spaces on the small state's debate track. This brings us to the debate track. Let's go take a look. So it said I can move two at the small states. So we go up one, two on the small state debate track. And so one of the things you can do on your turn, one of the, the, uh, the last things that, we, that we're gonna talk about is going on a debate track. And so if I had a card in my hand that had a Federalist, one of the things I could do is just discard this card and move my guy one up on the Federalist. Let's say I was a blue player, boom. So that you can move up. If I threw out down two cards that were Federalists on that turn, I'd move up to two and so on and so forth. Some people might end up tying you, which is bad because at the end of the round, um, whoever's in the lead is gonna get one of these tokens to whichever one the one they're in the lead. But if somebody's tied with, if the two people that are in the lead for that debate track are tied, nobody gets anything. So those typically uh, cause a lot of ruckus. And so those are these debate tokens. Those are used for end game scoring that I'll talk to you about in just a moment. The last thing you can do is called snub dele delegates, which essentially is if you don't like any of your cards, you can pretty much discard any amount of them and then redraw them. So let's say I didn't like any of these three, I could throw them away and pick up three new cards. And those are the four things you can do on your turn. Now, as people are voting, they're putting their influence markers if they want. Um, you know, if they run out of influence markers, you can always take it off, put on something new, and you can get new influence markers using your cards with, through certain events during the game as well. But this will continue till a round ends by a vote being completed. And a vote completes when either all seven tables of of yay are filled or all six tables of nay are filled and uh, so let's say the seventh card comes here and the vote finishes since the yay vote won this article gets placed as is into the article pool of the ones that have been passed if it was nay at the end of the round this will end up getting flipped over to its opposing notice the red there shows it was it was pretty much opposed and this would go into the into the delegate into the uh, article pool now for every person that was on the winning side, which is this, they're gonna get one point for every influence marker that they had on this side, um, with the with the um, the exception of it, if you were on the actual same faction, which is the big state, this person would get two points. So essentially, this person gets two points, and everybody else here gets one point for each delegate that they're that they're that they're person on. So this guy would get one, two, three points, white, and so on and so forth. Now the people over here, they're not totally out of luck because they get to take these two people and they're gonna move them all the way to the committee room up here, okay? And so when they get moved to the committee room, um, boom, here. Now, if they have a now a majority in here, they get to automatically get one point for each of these guys and they get to now put this article like it was just passed on either side. So sometimes actually being on the on the wrong side of the, of the, um, the, uh, the, the, the vote is a good thing. And also at the end of the round, you'll resolve these. The white guy, the James Madison here, would get that token. These two don't get anything because they were tied. And then they would take these off and put them in their pool. You'd clear the board. You'd start off with some new articles. Of course, over here, this is the article pool. This first article would be the next one to be voted on. And this one would be the one that goes in the committee room. Now, once that vote goes, we show you how that resolves. That happens three more times. So there's a total of four big rounds until things get resolved. After that, all of these articles will have been resolved. And what happens is we talked about those debate tokens. 
is the person that has the most, uh, let's see, we go to the article that has the most amount of ones passed. So we have five Federalists, this is the most. Whoever has the most of these Federalist tokens is gonna get five points. Um, and, and that's pretty much if they tie, then they both get it. Um, and then the next place, player would get three, uh, sorry, four, and then the next one would get three, and the next one would get two, whoever has the most of those tokens. So that's why during the debate time, you're trying to jockey to get the tokens that you think are gonna have the most articles passed towards the end. You add those bonus points to all the points that you had gotten so far in the game over there during the Liberty Bell track, and the one who has the most points at the end is the winner. Okay, there's Founding Fathers. I tend to really be drawn to realistic themes, um, and even more so historical realistic themes, things that actually even happened. Uh, and so this is no different. I, I really loved the theming of this game. I loved the rule book so much, content. Over the half the rule book is historical content that you can use. A lot of the flavor text and the cards and on the articles just, it's really cool to, to really immerse yourself in the theme of this game, and I really love that about this. Uh, the gameplay itself, um, it's pretty interesting. It's that, you know, that, that card driven, uh, strategy where you're reading the text on the cards and you're either playing them to vote or playing them to get some debate tracks or playing them to do a, cause an event to happen. Uh, and so it's really interesting. It kind of feels like a little puzzle where you're trying to figure out, okay, which guys can I use for this? I can vote for this there and get a point there. And if, but if I don't know, I can move to the committee room and I can flip that one over because I have debate tokens for that. And the, you're putting together this whole puzzle in your brain as you're playing the game and it, and, it, and it morphs over time as different articles get passed that you may or may not have thought that they got passed. So your strategy, strategy changes over the while too. Um, so overall, I really like the game. I think it's totally a solid game. Um, there is a little bit of chaos there. Um, it's, it feels, you know, like it feels almost like a borderline take that game because a lot of the events that you can throw down really screw your opponents up. Um, and so there is a lot of up and ups and downs in this game, and some of them are really brutal. Uh, so, you know, a couple times I was on the debate track. I played a card, an ongoing event that said like, no one can mess with the event track. You, you know, so I pretty much had solidified two of them. And then someone threw a card down that said, move everyone back one and my card, it allowed it to happen. And then someone else played another card that says, use the last discard pile. So I went from totally having two things in the debates to having nothing, when I thought for sure, absolutely sure I had it. So you've gotta be okay with like being on the top of the mountain and then being on the bottom of the mountain, or being on the bottom and then jumping straight to the top and going back and forth. If you can't, if you don't like those types of swings and you like it to be a little bit more focused, you might not like this game. But if you don't mind the take that part aspect of it and you don't mind um, going up and down, then, then it's definitely one you're gonna wanna check out because it's a cool puzzle. The theme is great. It's just a really cool, solid game. And uh, I'm gonna recommend it because I definitely think it's, a, it's an excellent game if you're okay with those little mishaps. Uh, the only other nitpick I have is the quality of the cards were not very good. Um, they, they were kind of, they're really hot. They were stiff, so they were really hard to shuffle. And then they nick and knack very easily. So, and as you get to know the games better, you know which ones of those super powerful cards are in which states. And if those things get nicked, uh, man, it's all over. You better sleeve these cards, which I don't like to do. So I wish the components were a little bit better on, on, the, on the card side of things, but I'm nitpicking here because the game's, the game's very good. If you like that card-driven strategy, you don't mind take that, don't mind a little bit of chaos and, and craziness, you want to check out Founding Fathers. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>